Hey everyone, welcome back to the Woodland Reboot. I'm Peter here at the Reboot. There's the big red barn that I built. Beautiful sunny winter day. I've had a lot of questions during the last couple weeks, guys. People want to know how much it costs to build this pole barn. So, let's dive in and let's have a look and see what I paid to put together this pole barn. You need to have a place where you're going to build your project. You've got to have some land. For the purposes of this project, I'm not including the land value or cost in the budget for this project, for this pole barn build process. There's my big pile of logs. I think it's about 72 spruce that I'm uh, going to get ready to mill up. All that figures are in Canadian dollars. And at the end of the video, I'll do a summary of all the costs and do a conversion to US dollars. I decided to saw the lumber for my pole barn. You don't have to do this. Lots of good lumber in those stores, everybody. For whatever reason, I have a fascination with these sawmills. So I took on this challenge. It's not easy, a lot of work, it takes a bit of time, but well worth it. With the logs all sawed into lumber and a place to store my equipment in the shed that you see there, I now needed to clear more area, more of the land for the actual pole barn position. So you see an excavator here, again not me, someone I brought in for the day, clearing more of the topsoil off of the bedrock. And this is important because in a minute you're going to start to see how I uh, start to build and make the piers and then have the foundation poured. But again, key thing, I'm right on top of the bedrock. And here's the second load of gravel for the day. With this initial layer of the pad in place, it's now time for me to start to make the piers. It's important also to note that I've been doing this project 100% off-grid. So my power comes from generators. here today we've got the first load of gravel dropped off we're going to bring up the bed so that it's four inches shy of the top of all the piers and I'm gonna to try to get that comp that compacted today as well so there's another load of gravel coming from one driving operating this uh, front-end loader and another person who you'll see in a few minutes operating a laser level to ensure that the uh, gravel bed is I completed the compacting the next day until the surface of the pad was nice and smooth. Make no doubt about it, this is hard, heavy work. The concrete pours were among the hardest work in the entire project. My daughter joined me for the third and fourth pours. The price increased for the third and fourth pours because I had some chemical added that slowed the drying process. Installing the saddles in the piers 
gives me a good opportunity to explain how I'm going to include those in the budget figures in the in a latter part of this video. I'm not going to break out those costs. I'm going to include them in what I call the hardware, the fastener, and consumable budget lines that I'm going to explain later on in the video. I've also got a spot where I'm going to uh, provide some detail concerning the equipment that I rented through the build process. It was a great feeling to actually start standing the posts finally, build a wall, get a second wall up, build that back wall. But at this point, this activity actually doesn't represent a cost. The logs were purchased, I've milled them, now it's time to stand them up. And there they are everyone, 32 foot long trusses delivered. You have to get some additional uh, support to get trusses in place. So in the case here, you can see that I went out and rented this um, lift bucket that had the capacity to uh, lift the trusses. And I've also got my dad helping me, he's up there in the bucket. We managed to get all the trusses installed during the two-day rental limit for the man lift, so that was a great success in that regard. Installing the purlins on the roof is not an easy process, but again, there's no major budgetary implication at this point in the project. The wood has been milled. At this point, I was beginning to run out of some of my uh, 2 by 4s that I had milled up, and I had gone and purchased some, but I'll explain that later in some additional uh, lumber costs. Uh, at the end of the day, the major purchase at this point in the project was buying the safety harness. If you go back and watch the build series for the pole barn, you'll see that um, I had some family members and a few friends come out and help, one of them being Michael, you see here on the chop saw right now. There are no salary costs whatsoever for myself or for friends like Michael. Um, Needless to say, I owe Michael a few beers, but this is done as a hobby. This is done as a, as a recreational activity, so it's not uh, calculated into the cost. My friend Michael is back to help with installing the garage door. Again, if you go and watch the video in terms of the actual installation, link up above, you'll see that I got my hands on a used garage door. Brand new, these things can go, I think, if they're insulated between three to four thousand dollars, I picked mine up for about three hundred and fifty. I planned to install the metal roof by myself. It didn't work out that way. It was very much a struggle trying to do this on my own. In the end, I hired a three-person crew to help install the metal roof. So let's get into the cost for installing the roof. The price you see here includes all the roof sheets, screws, drip edges, etc. It is important to note at this point that in terms of the metal I needed for this project, I paid a pretty penny for it. I purchased it at the height of the trade war, the aluminum trade war between Canada and the US. The metal packages that you can purchase for these types of buildings are fantastic. What you usually do is you approach a hardware store or a big box store in my case, as you can see with the building wrap, I approached a home hardware outlet. The one I went to was in uh, Westport, Ontario. You then provide the hardware store the details concerning your building, measurements, the number of windows, the size of the windows obviously, um, overhangs, size of the garage door opening, etc. And then they provide you with the steel that you want. You can obviously do what I did and uh, go two-tone. A little bit extra work if those were all single sheets there would have been a little bit of uh, less work involved in terms of installing them um, and then you just get busy with installing everything the instructions that come with the package of materials are also quite extensive as well as obviously you can go online and uh, figure out how to install the material as well 
The metal I used for my project is manufactured by a company called Ideal Roofing Company here in the Ottawa area. And the profile of the wall sheeting, the metal sheets for the walls, is colonial. Let's get into the details and the grand total. You'll see that I've included the building permit cost there as the first line. And then I've got logs, log handling, sawmill, site prep, all these other things that you've noticed as I went through the video. Now as we get to the bottom of this list, you'll see um, significant numbers for additional lumber as well as hardware slash fasteners. Let me explain those a little bit. I ended up buying more store-bought lumber than I anticipated. I needed it for the concrete molds. I didn't find that the milled lumber that I had prepared was uh, up to the quality that I wanted in terms of preparing the concrete molds. I also needed pressure treated for the bottom girts of the wall systems and then there were other pieces that I had to buy as well. The hardware and fasteners line item is mainly for nails, screws, caulking, etc. But this also includes items such as the man door, the safety harness, scaffolding, and a host of other tools and equipment that I bought for this build process. I also included the cost of my sawmill, some log handling equipment, and you'll also notice a rather sizable cost for a generator repair. I could take those out and it would probably knock anywhere or probably close to $4,000 if not a little bit more off the overall total but it was part of the project, I've included them in there, I'm very happy with it. My grand total came in right around 35,000 Canadian dollars or about 27,000 US. I'm pretty pleased with this. My objective was to challenge myself, mill, saw the lumber for the project, build as much of it by myself as possible, and as many of you guys will identify with out there, create a place where I can stick my toys and use them. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, like and share, and leave any comments down below.